I've had some time to think about my design and basically I'm not happy with it anymore. I mean, I'm happy with this, but I'm not happy about combining these two. I just can't see this producing the maximum heat output that I'm sort of after. Uh, not with this stove anyway. So at this point, I'm sort of branching this into two simultaneous builds, which will be good. This will be quite simple. And this one's going to be a little bit more complex. And I'm sort of happier about that because the build where I showed making the, the device that created this coil, I really wanted to be more DIY friendly. And so to go and take the DIY friendly coil and couple it with a not so DIY friendly rocket stove just wasn't sitting right. So this is going to become a much simpler and probably more effective stove, but it's not going to be a rocket stove. It's more or less just going to be like a, a brazier that uses the coil in order to hold the wood. This on the other hand, it's going to be um, the more flashy, I don't know, I'm not trying to blow smoke up, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit fancier. We'll still hopefully produce um, a reasonable outcome. And then we'll have a bit of a, a battle, a head to head heat off, I guess at the end, where this stove will be versing this stove, because we now sort of have a baseline with the, the last couple of videos that I've done. Anyway, this is now going to be the heating chamber, if you like, the water heating chamber. I'm going to have two bits of pipe running through the riser, getting direct contact with the fire. This will have the back cut out of it so that I'm getting as much surface contact as I can with uh, the riser. Let's keep going.
There's still plenty of life left in that, but you know. So I'm um, going to do a leak test. I'm also going to see how actually how many litres of water this system holds, just for, you know, keep in the back of the mind. I'm using these um, yoghurt tubs that hold one litre of water, one litre. One. Gee. It's, it's actually one litre. <laughs> there you go. It's pretty much... It's going to be a lead, uh, let's fill it up to about half or three quarters. Yep, okay, so there we go. Well, that answers that question. We are heating at any one time one litre of water. That's actually kind of cool. Um, that's a nice round number that I can work with. I didn't make it all the way to the third grade for nothing. So, got to check on the inside as well, and the outside. So far, so good. I can't see any water, so I'm going to call that watertight. Ideally, you could also do this test with compressed air and some soapy water, but compressed air and water would be the more proper way of testing the, the airtight slash watertight nature of something, of a vessel. But this will do.
just like that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm not going to be that yet. Don't look at that. You didn't see anything. So I finished uh, peeling all of this protective film off. Basically, I needed to do that so I can now do the final assembly. Um, I didn't want to leave any plastic in between surfaces that would smell and just be nasty. And I can now finally start riveting it all together. These M6 bolts, which have a 5mm hole, have, have only been there as a temporary thing. Just for the assembly, so I can get it back apart and, you know, saves me having to drill these guys out. I need to go turn the air compressor on.
Okay, this system is filling up with water. While it's filling up, I'm going to light the stove. Wow. Well, that's a problem. This is a 3D printed flange that I made to go in the, um, the element hole, and it's clearly not very happy. I'm gonna have to fix that, because if not, I'm gonna be constantly topping it up, and it's just gonna make a big mess in this workshop. We'll just have to come back to this. It's the next morning. The water is starting at 30 degrees. Um, I ended up using the old white ground pepper trick. Basically I just added some of this to the tank and it just goes down into the water and finds any gaps and clogs it. It's a handy trick for your radiator if you've got a slow leak or even a fast leak. I've seen that stuff work in wonders. Just see those coals down there. So we are literally like half a degree off 60 and it's been one hour. That little stub is quite warm to the touch, like, um, like toasty, toasty warm. That's pretty cool. We're, we've heated this thing up pretty well. We're pretty much maintaining uh, 59 degrees, which is really nice. 59 degrees, and that's basically just chugging along on hot coals. So yeah, that's not bad. It does clog up with coals and I can't really clean them out. So that's an, something that I've overlooked and I'll need to come back and address. But otherwise, as far as the heating capacity of this is concerned, going from 30 degrees to 60 degrees in one hour, that for me is a, is a, that's a success. I've got a few ideas. I'm gonna sit on it for a while and work out what I wanna do. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. So it's been a week and nothing much has really changed, except I've had a chance to think about this. The problem is really obvious. I can't clear the coals while it's running. But um, if I put an opening under here with a bit of a chute and it's all sealed, and basically as you push more wood in, the coals, as they build up and are pushed forwards, they're gonna drop down and end up in this ash collection area. So that could work. And I guess the only way to find out whether or not it works is to just, let's just go ahead and do it. <laughs> I do have to open this up and I'm, it is what it is. I was tempted just to release the video as is and go, meh, you know, but my wife was like, you can do better. And she was right. And so let's do better. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. P 
feet on me. Oh, dang. That's how you decapitate a stove. Okay, you get the point. Let's see how it fits. Right? Very good. Let's glue it together. Last time anyone's going to see those nice welds. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Oh, let's test it. We're at the one hour mark and this thing has not slowed down. It is going really well. The water is at 58 degrees, so we're pretty much on par there. Uh, I did start the burn on softwood, which doesn't burn as hot, so that kind of makes sense. But now I moved on to hardwood, and I'm really happy with how this is going. The coals have built up a little bit, but nowhere near as much. We haven't stemmed the flow. So that is, that is what I was after. And I guess at this point, we'll just see how long it goes before I have to intervene. If you're wondering too, this handle is cold. Like it is not hot at all to the touch. So that's just something else that I haven't, that I wanted to check. So we're at the hour and 20 minute mark. It hasn't slowed down yet, though there is a, a reasonable buildup of coals, but it seems to be working. The coals as they build, as they work their way up, they burn down and fall down into the, uh, into the chamber. I haven't opened the chamber to see how much, it's, um, how much is in there because I, I just haven't had to. It, it's, um, it's really doing quite well. And the water temperature at the last time I looked was at 70 degrees. So it's at the point now where um, I can't put my finger in it. We, it's on the verge of burning me. So this is... Um, this is the results I was after. An hour and a half, 80 litres, well, yeah. 
Uh, it's an 80 litre tank, but not all of it will be heated. But yes. This pipe, um, I might have mentioned earlier that I, it didn't feel any different the last time. This time it is noticeably different. I, I can't hang on to that for any longer than that without feeling like I'm going to burn myself. Yet the pipe at the bottom is still cool. So that's the weirdest thing. That's, that's cold and that is just crazy hot. So <laughs> oh man, that's wild. The outside skin is hot to the touch, but again, I'm not getting burnt. I wouldn't go touching that area. And the, it just seems to be working. I've tried to not fuss around with the wood as much this time. I do find, like now, um, the wood does burn up a little bit. And when that happens, uh, you get a little bit of smoke escaping out of the feeder. But otherwise, um, it's really not too bad. So I think here is as good as any place to finish up this video. I really appreciate you watching and uh, if you haven't already, if you could like and subscribe, that would be excellent. It really helps YouTube to, to know that this is a video worth promoting and that would really help me out.